Ages, the end of the 7th century AD, in Western Europe. The old continent is torn by constant wars. One of the conflicts is that against the heathens, the enemies of Christ. Great armies have been sent to the last outposts of heathenry with one single goal convert or kill. And so, in the end, the followers of Christ have conquered most of Europe. Not so much by peace and the news of salvation as by the sharp sword. Just as their Messiah had foretold long ago. One of the last heathen rulers, often the target of Christians, is a certain Frisian king, a proud warrior and a hardened veteran of many bloody battles. Redbud. Known for defeating the mighty Christian Franks, on many occasions he has been a constant obstacle to Frankish rulers and zealous monks. However, even he who hated the Franks and the Christians alike, in the end decided to embrace Christianity, thus renouncing the old gods and the old ways. Why? It is not known for certain. Still, the old gods were not gone just yet. They seem to have recognized this brave king for what he was, and, whispering him the truth, made him strong when he almost fell. The story is as follows. It has been said that Wolfram the monk was about to baptize the brave king when the king suddenly stopped. He thought for a while turned around and faced the monk, looking him straight in the eyes. For a good reason this made the monk quite nervous. After all, thought the monk, one never knew with these devil-worshipping pagans where one stood. The king spoke politely but resolutely. Do tell me, shall I meet my ancestors in this Christian heaven of yours I have heard you preach so much about? Now the monk stopped, his eyes filled with hatred for the heathens and their false gods and idols. If he weren't a king, the monk thought, I would have him burn at stake. Let the fires purify him and make him renounce those demons he calls gods. But the clever monk controlled himself. He was, after all, so close to victory. And so he spoke, not raising his eyes. I'm afraid not, my lord. Your ancestors were heathens and shall burn in the fires of hell for all eternity. Upon hearing the monk speak without any respect whatsoever for the king's noble ancestors, as if they were not more than a gang of common criminals, Redbud became infuriated. He grabbed an axe from one of his guards and pierced the monk with his gaze. You deceitful monk, he yelled. I swear by my ancestors God, the great warden, that I would rather be in hell with them than in your heaven with you, all your saints, and those accursed Franks. He looked at the pale-faced monk, ready to strike a blow. The monk froze. Has his god abandoned him now? Now that he is so close to victory? Curse these heathens, O Lord! Let them feel your wrath! The monk prayed, trembling like a child. After all, this was a heathen warrior, and not some scared peasant he could accuse of worshipping the demons. The king saw the monk tremble in fear, in front of the axe, ready to take his life. The 
is not an ounce of courage and honor in you, cowardly monk. Go now, before I change my mind, go and pray to your God that we do not meet again on earth, in heaven, or in hell. Thus spake the brave king, echoing the forgotten words of Polydorus of Sparta. If you worship your enemy, you are defeated. If you adopt your enemy's religion, you are enslaved. If you breed with your enemy, you are destroyed. The moral of the story being, of course, respect yourself, trust yourself, remember always who you are and what you have inherited. For those who seem higher than you, the false leaders, rich men, glamorous opinion makers are often but self-centered tricksters and illusionists, useful fools and blood-sucking vampires. Tools used to fool the masses. Take everything they have. Use and abuse anyone. Weak enough 